What does the United Pentecostal Church International, otherwise known as UPCI or Oneness Pentecostals, believe? Welcome, this is People of the Free Gift, where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. We're so glad you joined us. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because there are, we release content related to the cults and sharing the gospel with them several times a week. And so let's go ahead and jump in. All of the content from the day is from my book, Sharing Jesus with the Colts, available on Amazon as paperback or Kindle. And so you can pick up a copy and it's going to go into much more content, not only on this group, but several other groups and lots of different tactics on how to share the gospel strategically with all of the members of these groups. And so let's talk a little bit about the history of this group. They come from the Assemblies of God denomination. And, you know, at a certain point in their history, there was a group of pastors within the movement that started believing this thing called modalism. Now, modalism is something that was condemned in the early days of the church. Um, and modalism teaches that you have only one God, which is clearly what Bible, the Bible teaches, but it denies and rejects the Trinity. It doesn't reject the divinity of Jesus, but in fact actually believes that it's only Jesus that we should be worshiping and baptizing in the name of and all of those things. That Jesus is the name of God, so to speak. And so uh, they believe that the Father becomes the Son in that the Son now is working through the Holy Spirit. And so you only have one manifestation of God at any given point in, in time. So there's one God who takes on different forms, but he can only be that one form at any given time. Now, I, right off the bat, you know, those who believe in the Trinity would say things like, well, what about the baptism of Jesus? What about how Jesus interchangeably talks about, you know, the Father will make his home in you, I will make my home in you, the Spirit will make his home in you. Uh, the, the, the attributes of God, the titles of God, the, the, you know, the acts of God, all being attributed to each member of the Trinity as if it, they lay exclusive claim to it. What about that? Uh, what about Jesus talking to the Father? What about when Jesus dies on the cross? And... Um, is there, does that mean that God ceases to exist? Why is he saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, all of these things are legitimate questions that immediately pop up into our minds uh, if you come from a Trinity point of view. Uh, and so they are a very interesting group, but they believe that you should baptize only in the name of Jesus, which goes along with another point that they don't believe that Matthew 28, 19 was in the original text because Jesus there says in the Great Commission, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't believe that was in the original and they would point to the book of Acts as evidence of that as you, know, you never see them baptizing in that formula. You see them baptizing in the name of Jesus, baptizing them in the name of Jesus. And so they believe that you should only baptize them in the name of Jesus. And if you were baptized any other way, then that does not count. That is not legitimate. And you have to be baptized in order to be saved. Another thing that they say is that you would have to be speaking in tongues in order to be saved. And so, obviously, those are two things right off the bat. But on top of that, they have a laundry list of legalistic and, you know, abusive practices. Um, legalism does not always end up in abuse. It just is legalism. But this, their brand of legalism becomes a form of their mind control practices. And I've talked with several members of people who have come out of this group and they detail um, the, the practices and uh, dealing with behavior modification, information control, and thought control and emotional control that's going on within this, this group and has been for a long time. So, you know, they have claimed spiritual abuse, uh, claim, uh, claims of control, claims of indoctrination, punishment for leaving the group, 
uh, the teaching that they are the one true church. They're the only church that is correctly doing this right and believing the right things and that there's free thought that is discouraged within the group. And so I want to know what you have to say. Is there something that I missed that you would like to share with the group? Or, is, or do you have questions about this group? Do you have experience with this group? Do you know somebody who is caught up in this group? Um, or are you a member of this group? I would like to hear from all of you in the comment section down below. I'll be choosing some of those things for the weekly Q&A dealing with content related to the Colts on this channel. And so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give this video a thumbs up if you like the content for today and share this video with other people in your lives who are trying to reach out to those caught in religion with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And until next time, May God's grace be with you.